Russell Texas Bentley, or just Russell Bentley, is a fascinating defector type because of the fact that he is this Texan who is a self-proclaimed communist who, in 2014, moved to the next region of Ukraine, joined the separatist movement, and is in full support of Russia. As he feels as a communist, he is fighting up against the, uh, the forces of evil, uh, of fascism, of capitalism that is trying to undermine and destroy Russia. And what I find really interesting about this guy is the fact that he is so committed to his beliefs, the fact of being a communist and someone who's fighting up against fascism, that he's willing to support Russia through and through and not criticize them at all. So in to kind of give some backstory, in around December of 2014, he moved to the, uh, the next region to support the separatist forces. He was a soldier in the Essence of Time combat union, unit of the Novorussian Armed Forces. He served at the Donetsk airport battle and at Spartak as a rifleman and an RPG gunner. From there, as he got older, uh, he saw that he couldn't really continue fighting on the front line, so he went and he transitioned from being a fighter to being an information warrior, or essentially uh, engaging in information warfare where he was supporting the separatist movement in the next People's Republic and also supporting Russia. What's interesting about him is that I kind of discovered this guy back in 2015, 2016 when there was a video on Vice that came out where he was being interviewed and how he was very much committed to his communist beliefs and the fact that he was fighting up against the forces of fascism, up against Ukrainian Nazis and felt that the Russia was on the right side of history in, in, his, in his view. In Ukraine, how did you get here? I've always been uh, interested in politics. Uh, started reading Che Guevara, Ho Chi Minh when I was about 12 years old. Really, uh, communism uh, seems like a, a just way, a good way. And so, I mean, and I know from history that it takes communism to defeat fascism. So I'm a communist. I'm here to fight fascism. Now, a lot of people at that time didn't know that much about him, other than here he was this Texan communist that was being interviewed by Vice. But how he really became popular was that a few, I guess a few days after the Russian invasion on February 24th, 2022, a video came out which went really viral of him promoting the Russian military, the fact that he felt that uh, the Russians were going to move in and absolutely destroy the Ukrainian Nazis and completely denazify much of Ukraine and be victorious. This video got circulated very quickly and people became aware of this guy, of this essentially this defector to Russia who was in full support of the Russian, uh, of the Russian military, of the Russian Federation in their uh, attempt of destroying Ukraine and denazifying as they say. And a lot has been, no, uh, more has been learned about him since that video went viral. The fact that he is somewhere in Donetsk um, uploading videos and also doing interviews and blogs and so on and so forth. And there is also a video that a few days ago that I stumbled across where he was being interviewed and he was really talking about his backstory, his life's backstory, which was really great to listen to and watch. And I will put the video in the description below. But essentially in the video, he talks about the fact that he grew up and he became fascinated with uh, communism by reading Guerrilla Warfare by Che Guevara. From there, he started reading other pieces of communist literature and he started learning more about communism. And he was very much convinced that he was being brainwashed by the United States, that communism in the Soviet Union and other countries was not really being told fully and honestly to the American people and the fact that you know capitalism was a devastating exploitative force that was pretty much evil in his mind and over time he started to kind of become more radical as he was in the United States and he felt that when the separatist war when the civil war in Ukraine started in uh, 2014 that he felt that it was important for him to essentially join up with these, with these separatist forces, and to support them in the best, uh, the best way he can. Uh, either it would be fighting on the front lines, or now being an information warrior, or fighting for, uh, fighting through information warfare for the Donetsk People's Republic in Russia. And I've seen a lot of interviews with this guy. I've seen a lot of chats that he's had with other people. And seeing him and the way that he speaks is very unique in a way. And I think that it's, it's funny to see this guy who just completely is so convinced that he's absolutely correct in 
uh, in the sense that Russia is on the right side of history, that he, uh, him as a communist, they are fighting up against capitalism. Now, he kind of is distinct from other kind of defectors throughout history. There are many notable examples. And to me, I think he reminds me a lot of Cairo, this guy who was this self-taught soldier who went to Libya and uh, fought for many of the Libyan militias who were up against the Muammar, Muammar Gaddafi's forces. There's actually a fantastic video that came out from Atrocity Guide, which I'll link in the description below. There's also a, a, an a sense that this guy is pre pretty deluded in the, in the fact that he's so willing to believe the propaganda that's coming from Russia. He's so willing to believe that they're on the right side of history fighting up against Ukrainian Nazis. Not to say that there aren't any Nazis that are present within Ukraine. Uh, there is, of course, the Azov Battalion. But I don't think that this is, is quite prominent throughout the Ukrainian military and throughout society there in that country. I think this justification or supposed justification of invading Ukraine Ukraine to denazify it was sort of ludicrous in a way and I feel that he continues to push that narrative and really doesn't care what other people say and he's not willing to kind of uh, change his mind on anything he feels that he's certain on the fact that he is fighting up against capitalism and fascism and in that sense I think that him as a defector and him being used as a propaganda tool for the Russians um, he doesn't see that he's just ex essentially an exploitable, uh, expendable asset for their kind of uh, propaganda war that they're waging up against the West. He has a quite active Telegram account, which I recommend you guys checking up on and subscribing to because of the fact that he is constantly uploading videos and content from him. And also he has another account called a VK account, which is like the equivalent to Facebook or it's considered Russian Facebook. But I, have a di I had a difficult time to try to get onto there. The other sources of information I would say is like there's a Rolling Stone article which I haven't been able to re read because I didn't want to subscribe to the Rolling Stones but if you get a chance maybe read it and tell me if the information on there is useful in any capacity. There's also Wikipedia but it's limited information on there as well and I think the best source is from him on his own website where he talks about his life, he gives blogs and uh, he really goes over uh, the decisions and, and his views on much of the world and really the state of affairs and even though the website hasn't been updated I think it's a really s still a great source of info but the best source I would say is the video that I recommended in the beginning of this video where he really goes over his life and he talks about the stories of, how, of his upbringing how he became interested in communism his life in Texas how he was arrested in North in the you know, northern United States for smuggling marijuana sent to a federal prison where he became disillusioned and he can't he became fed up with the United States and the fact that they were committing war crimes they were engaging in exploitation of other countries and fascist policies and he wanted to go and fight up again uh, fight against them so yeah I definitely recommend that video as I think it's a really great source of information of learning more about his life now like I stated his two most well-known videos are the vice news interview by with Simon Ostrovsky and of course the viral video that that was posted on Twitter, YouTube, Reddit, that kind of was highly circulated and a lot of people became aware of this dude being in Donetsk. Now with those videos I've also found other content on him. There was a video where he was actually with a unit in a house and he was telling the story about the fact that he survived a mortar attack and the in the building that was constantly being shelled and I really like this video as it kind of like he goes over his experiences fighting on the front line and how he, he kind of transitioned away from fighting on the front line into becoming kind of engaged in information warfare. Another video of course I stated was the video where he goes over his life and he talks about his experiences growing up but there's also some interviews that he does with people, some journalists and and also there are videos where I guess there's some pro-Russian channels where they gone into the Donetsk area, the Donbass and we see Russell kind of giving a tour of the area and talking about uh, the kind of conditions that they're living in and the type of fighting that they're experiencing in that area and really just about the people and the lot and the kind of humanitarian aid that he has kind of done for those people in that specific area. 
I think that with Russell Texas Bentley, we're seeing a person who really has chosen to be on the Russian side and his, he's not willing to kind of relent or make up his mind in any other way. He's pretty much determined to stick with it. And we're seeing him kind of on borrowed time as we're really, as of the making of this video, we're seeing uh, the Ukrainian military be successful in many of their counter-offenses as they push more into the Donetsk area, the Donbass area, the Oblast, and they're able to take more territory, and the Russian military is losing a lot, taking a lot of losses, material and men, and they're not able to sustain this war. So I'm not even sure what's going to happen with him in the future. Will he be captured? Will he be killed? Uh, will the Ukrainian forces not really be kind of merciful towards him as he has been promoting a lot of propaganda and he's been part of the information warfare side of the Russian military. So what's going to happen to him in the future and that's where I'm kind of fascinated with him. The other thing is that I'm not sure if I can consider this guy a lol cow in the traditional sense. Yeah, he kind of is pretty much hard headed and you see that he's not willing to kind of change his mind on anything. It seems that he doesn't really want to hear any other side. He's not, as he's pretty much convinced that he's fighting up against capitalism and fascism and that he's fighting Ukrainian Nazis. In that sense, you can compare Russell, Bent uh, Russell Bentley to, let's say, Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal has openly stated that he is siding with the Russians and he feels that he, uh, that the West has been spreading a lot of misinformation, a lot of lies, and that they are very much fascist. And we see this dude, this kind of failed actor, this loser of a guy, choose this the, the side of the oppressors of the evaders, and he's going to have to suffer the consequences of that. As you know, we have this fat, stupid moron. Now, now I wouldn't say that Steven Seagal is uh, better than Russell Bentley. I, I'm not sure if I can even kind of put them on the same level. I think that Steven Seagal, through and through, has been a pretty douchebag character throughout his life life. Uh, so I'm, I'm not really sure if I can even side with uh, Steven Seagal at all, whereas I would probably kind of want to hear more from Russell Bentley. Now, this is a type of individual I would love to talk to. This is a guy I would love to correspond with because, again, we're seeing a lot of misinformation through this war. We're seeing a lot of things that are going back and forth where, you know, it's either the Russians are winning or the Ukrainians are winning. And it's we can only see when this war comes to an end uh, the true results because of the fact right now there's so much up in the air and there's so much disinformation that is circulating around. So I'm, I might be completely wrong as I would like to talk to this dude. He He's pretty fascinating and I think that you know if if this war can come to a close pretty soon and we can see uh, Russell essentially I guess I, I guess move to Russia and not really suffer any harsh consequences or if he does face consequences there it's gonna be he's gonna face justice in a, an appropriate way in an appropriate manner but let me know in the description down below um, let me comment please if you could if you let me know of what videos you guys have seen of Russell Texas Bentley that have been very illuminating and very interesting from seeing his perspective on the war of the kind of Russian uh, being a pro Russian Federation also what do you generally think? Do you think he's a traitor? Do you think he's on the right side of history? Do you think he's a lol cow <laughs> like Chris Chan or Fed Smoker like I previously made in those types of videos where I talked about them? What do you think about this guy? And uh, let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I didn't give that too much information, but I will uh, link all the videos that I found on him in the dis in the description below and tell you guys uh, you know more information maybe in the comments as I'm getting updated about this dude so thank you for watching this video I hope you enjoyed and like always have a wonderful day